and welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press, uh, where we, of course, go through the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. We'll first of all, say good morning to our analyst, Mr. Chris Wandu, publisher of CKN News. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thanks for me. All right. Let's start with the Punch newspapers this morning and see how many of these big stories that we can quickly share. The first one, the big one there, of course, is talking uh, with regards to the issues in the Southeast. It says, federal government sounds tough. IG fingers IPOB as gunmen free 1,844 Imo inmates. Buhari calls attackers terrorists, demands arrest and prosecution of masterminds. Arnez expresses worry over rising attacks, and uh, Bazu declares curfew in Abia State. Uh, Jesus Christ has risen. You have no reason to be here again, gunmen, tells, uh, gunmen tell inmates. All right. NARD orders COVID-19 doctors to join strike, threatens 5 million naira fine. And the four marketing firms suffer 331.54 billion naira revenue drop. Debts exceeded revenues in Lagos, Cross River, FCT and others. That's from the FRC. Also on the punch, NBA protests as judiciary workers begin strike over autonomy. Lagos Bay's pastor kidnapped in Ondo found dead after two million naira ransom was paid. And also we've uncovered 50 billion naira hidden debt by Amosungu's government and that's uh, from Ogun State. One or two others, police rescued two-year-old twins locked up for three days without food. Uh, I think that's where we'll leave it on the punch this morning. Let's go to the Daily Independent on you know, the newspapers this morning. This one says shippers, terminal, terminal operators, stifle trade facilitation at ports. IPOB, IGP differ on prisons, police head, headquarters attacks, release of 1,844 inmates. Buhari calls attacks acts of terrorism, urges manhunts for fleeing prisoners. Uzadima condemns attacks, call for investigation. We see this one here saying, how OBJ jailed body judge over PDP national chair. That's according to Fayoshe, the former governor of AKT State. Five out of 39 kidnapped forestry college students regained freedom. Five out of 39 kidnapped forestry college students regained freedom. Insecurity, Abia government imposes curfew on Umwahi and Aba. Nikom's new rules set to alter insurance coy's ownership. Minister Asup hold emergency meeting over strike threats. Buhari supporters storm Abuja House in London. Those are the stories on the Daily Independence this morning. The Nigerian Tribune is next. Uh, we can find here Ishakiri Nation unveils 37-year-old Shola Emiko as Olu designate. Um, announces the passage of Olu of Wari or Giamme Ikewonli. Also this morning, uh, mach uh, the Oweri jailbreak is in the news. Machine guns, explosives used to free 1,844 inmates. And that's when police and prisons. Constables shot, vehicles burnt, police command raised. Attackers are terrorists, says the presidency. IPOB ESN did it, IGP says. And of course, uh, IPOB ESN say, no, we didn't. Namdekanu also says that no one deserves to be in jail. Also this morning, 1,222 shops burnt in Ibadan's largest auto spare parts market. Five of 39 abducted forestry college uh, students regain freedom. And doctors strike illegal NMA suffering from leadership failure, says minister. The federal government moves to avert ASUP strike, calls for emergency meeting. Those are the big ones, uh, of course. So once again, on Yinka Odumaki, I will organize activities to keep his ideals alive. And that's from uh, his wife and widow, uh, Joe Odumaki. Yeah, so those are stories we're uh, taking a look at this morning. We've seen uh, the Nigerian Tribune, Daily Independence, and the Punch newspaper. And across all the newspapers we've seen, uh, we, we've seen that this jailbreak in Owari is, you know, is 
basically the major stories here. And uh, even though we had conflicting re reports yesterday, one said 2,000 people and another 600, that's 2,600. But it seems your official figures we're getting here is 1,844 inmates. Uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, let's bring in the perspective of, you know, how the IPOB here is being fingered as the uh, orchestrator of this attack and, you know, the fact that they're denying this. Mr. Wandu, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, Thank you once again. For me, um, I hope they are not weak um, in appointing the relay. Uh, it's just let us clear of it has come to finger uh, iPod and ESN. That to me is uh, too hasty. And that in itself will also hinder proper investigation to what happened. Um, except the police have certain information which is not at our disposal. Uh, at, at this point. So I think all avenues should be come to be able to find out those behind this issue. When you just speak Julie to just iPod and this AESN, then the opportunity of looking at other areas uh, uh, would have been foreclosed. And that to me is not uh, a way to investigate. The police is already investigated. But what is more uh, shocking to me is that I know where this prison is. It's in the heart of a uh, And the police command is not just a few hours away from uh, um, this place. And uh, this, uh, the, 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 the attack has created for two, three hours that can happen. And also, we have um, the uh, military, uh, bay, a military base to be in the way. So, this is also just to. Uh, Few minutes a drive from where this happened, and the military didn't come and didn't to be able to make sure that uh, uh, they were able to add the situation on. We had lots of damage and uh, train of several uh, prisoners, most of them will never, uh, will never capture him or will not return. Don't forget what happened in those things. Till now, uh, nothing has been done. Most of the, those that escaped have not been captured or have not returned. And that to me is very important. And uh, that goes to also as what we've seen in the past that level of insecurity across Nigeria is no longer limited to one part of the country from southwest to southeast to northeast to northwest down to south and everywhere. Uh, we're having seen challenges in terms of security, and that is keeping me so much work that no oh, okay. Nigeria can. Mr. Wando. Mr. Wando, I, I want you also to react to, you know, there's one of the writers on the Nigerian Tribune this morning says the presidency calling them terrorists. Um, I saw, you know, reactions to that, you know, about how quick, um, you know, the, of course, presidency has labeled them terrorists, you know, but, you know, still has... Um, bandits as the name of those who have continued to kidnap and kill people across, you know, um, Nigeria. Um, so is that, you know, does that sound, you know, off for you also? Yes, it does. Um, but sometimes in the past, as the federal government, the Boko Haram and bandits, terrorists, uh, we are the federal government not be to, to say that for whatever reason. Um, so, uh, for them to now move and say those that attack the prisons, they are terrorists. I don't know the information at the bosom of the press that they are using that, that is a bet. If you also have a mere cause uh, uh, using uh, well, anybody that attacks uh, people or people who are arresting um, adequately is a terrorist, I mean, the full best of it, uh, we've seen and it's several that most of the prisoners a terrorist, whatever you look at, either as bandits, either as kidnappers, and other, uh, either as Boko Haram, or what you call them, anybody that takes them forcefully for whatever reason is, uh, is a terrorist. Uh, but my is that it's not just um, naming people as terrorists or this terrorist, what they have to do to approve them and make sure that they pay for their sins. The problem challenge would be that most of those. Uh, uh, that are have not been persecuted. And um, as well, the way you don't 
a mere sign of punitive measure against people that perpetrate and get involved in evil acts or criminals, then you need to be prepared, and that's what we are seeing. Okay, so there's another story here about security that really caught my attention. It's a, it says five of 39 abducted uh, Forestry College Kaduna students regained freedom. That's on the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, we know that uh, about 39 of them were still in you know, the captivity of the abductors. They had been calling for their release. Their parents, uh, one of the, the parents of the, of the children were, uh, was on off the press or on the breakfast to talk about you know, the situation. And we, we, we heard his pain, you know, how he pleaded to the government to release his daughters. But now just five out of 39 have been freed. With the Kaduna state government still insisting that there will be no, you know, no amnesty, no payment of ransom. Kudos to the government for this, really. But how do we get the rest back to safety? This is a challenge for both the federal government and the government to make sure that every um, every of those students uh, remains to be released. They've suffered so, they've suffered so much in these past few years. You saw the people that was released this year, how they were being seen, how we are trying to place and rest of them, and the kind of culture that was created out of them. Whether we like it or not, the lives of these students matters, and uh, the government of both cardinals should do everything humanly possible. Put them in whatever to make sure that um, they are and they are um, allowed to join their families. That those are within uh, Kaduna and other places is also having a serious impact on the school. Um, going back to school or, or, or education in that part of the country, uh, so, so much effort is made to make sure that boys and girls do not um, go to school. But with the recent Nappy, Abduction and from God going on. Um, the challenge is here now. Most of them try to be uh, a kind of uh, some level of apathy on the part of uh, students going back to school. But once again, I think the government of Kaduna State and the federal government should do everything humanly possible to make sure that those girls are They stay for long in the future. And it's not a thing we to see something that just happen to the children and all that. Is Oh well, um, apologies uh, for the uh, sound quality. The network isn't very smooth this morning, uh, but we'll struggle through it. Let's also get your thoughts on the NARD strike and the response by the Nigerian government. Um, the, of course, the NARD have tagged Ngige and uh, Hanire as saboteurs. And, of course, uh, there's also the government saying that the NMA you know, is um, suffering from mismanagement um, and all of that, Chris Ngige was also quoted, um, was also interviewed and, of course, made mention of uh, labor laws that can be enacted um, with regards to this strike. Um, do you think the government is handling this, you know, uh, properly? Uh, it, of course, no, I mean, properly. Um, for them to allow a press start to which uh, the doctors have to strike, to me, is not good enough. And... Uh, just a day to come to the power before they start to strike. Our president jetted to, to London for medical tourism or medical checkup or whatever. Uh, and the fact is that the government always said is that government signed the agreement we don't feel. And it, it, it's quite unfortunate uh, for you to call a doctor, some to or whatever, thing. <laughs> coming from um, ministers uh, and funny enough, the both ministers are doctors. Minister of Labor is a doctor. Minister of Health is involved. So for them to bring their colleagues, uh, uh, also so it, it, that is not true. So if there is man and there are some military, you have to be accepted to uh, uh, an agreement. They have to create the agreement and make sure that pay them what they are. They are not asking for truth. They are, that is less than what most of them are spending on their aid and other people. It is the, the minister that is not collecting those salaries and rest of them, is, is it not paid? So if there are these items that are what the doctor does, yes, why not give it to them? When to elevate to to elevate is the best. You can run and see practically all the hospitals are coming to the country, and the number of deaths that would have occurred just because of this kind of um, embroidery between government and doctor. And at a time like when we are having COVID um, issues, this is not the time to allow doctors to go ahead. I think something should be done as quickly as possible to make sure that. 
uh, this person may be called and the doctors are allowed to come back to court. So there's another issue about a strike in the newspapers this morning. On the Nigerian, uh, the Punch newspaper, we see this one. It says, MBA protests as judiciary workers begin strike over autonomy. So strike here, strike there in the judicial system, in the healthcare system, which regards politics and the president, just strike everywhere. I don't know what you think about this one with the MBA strike and uh, the, the tussle for autonomy. My sister is a sister strike. After this, and I'm sure that was to uh, but that's reality because uh, um, the economy is not helping us at all. And the government is also getting, it's really, it's not getting creative in handling issues of this. Yes, because why do people want to strike? Because that is the language that government understands. Or you get a strike. Uh, our government uh, does to know how to uh, go into a situation. Um, pacify the people and be sure that things don't get to a point where they are they are back they will have their back to the wall and know that they have no other option to resort to uh each strike and that is rather unfortunate. Um for MBA there are reasons um I hope that um, uh, Ministry of Justice, NGC, all the necessary uh, uh, uh law uh, agencies that are involved with this feature that um, system. Because we're already having this in the judicial system. We see how long it takes for them to get justice. If you go to the prisons and see a, a number of inmates that are waiting for cases to be here. So I'm just saying there yeah, and um, the cases have not been here because of the fact that we don't have uh, the judicial system, we don't have enough we don't have enough the capacity to be able to handle most of their cases and so uh this all will add more sort the injury as it uh but uh, I, I hope that we won't allow this to be uh, we are talking of us now we are talking of uh, um, lawyers who are the next set are they engineers or accountants or even we nobody where the uh, pendulum we swing the test this is not of time um, but I still believe that everything is still like leadership. We don't have the, we are getting the kind of shape we want, and we voted for, we voted for change. But what we didn't ask um, then was what type of change are we to get? And um, that is what we have to get. Uh, I, I did this still about two years to do this. But it, it, to me, it just seems that it's like things fall apart by juniors today, and then the sister is not holding it. All right. Um, quickly also, just before we uh, wrap up, um, we are going to be speaking with um, a media advisor to a former uh, president of Arnez in Ndibo this morning. And so, you know, I, I, I want your views on the responsibility of traditional leadership of Arnez in Ndibo and, of course, the governors of the Southeast at a time like this um, to, of course, uh, douse attention in the Southeast to find some level of control over... Um, you know, the young men in the Southeast that might be, you know, responsible for the violence. Um, we got, haven't gotten 100% clarity on who exactly is responsible for what happened in Nowhere um, uh, two days ago. Uh, but it's also, it's clear that there needs to be some, you know, person who steps into Dow's attention as it stands. Yeah, totally agree with I'm from the South East, and I will say that I'm happy with what is happening in the South. Um, the just in tension area, insecurity is high. Um, just a few days ago, we saw uh, Charles Sulu uh, being attacked in, in Anambra State. Three of his uh, security aides were killed, and there have been uh, community clashes in Boyne State, where several people died. There was also a like, so called planning henchmen in a point where several people have uh, died. Um, there's a position of Curfew in um, Abia State, Umia, and Aba, um, that just a state government, Abia State. There was an attack, just as right you said, you know, where there are over 1,800 prisoners that are let loose. That itself is a very, very, is a big thing uh, for our in the South. Um, and it is time for the leaders. Especially the governor. Yeah, we are talking about that. There is little an they can do. Uh, 
um, the board of water now press show that of government five um, uh, South East states to be able to come and uh, quickly mobilize them to make sure that this does not lead to some much, much bigger. This is why I started in North here yeah, in the North East and North West. And before you know it, it has just gone beyond everybody's expectation. We have uh, serious security challenges. In Southwest, uh, there has been an uh, introduction of Monteco, which is helping security agents to make and, and I also think that and South South and other parts of the country should be able to take a cue from what is happening in the Southwest to be able to make sure that security agencies have the necessary um, aid to uh, to assist them, uh, not only by providing the but also giving the necessary action to meet this important fact. Um, South East um, has never been bad since uh, 1999, as we move forward to integrity. Which would uh, be another, uh, there's no point for everybody. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chris Owandu, for your time on the breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. All right. All right. So we'll take a break here and come back with Today in History. Do stay with us. <laughs>